Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be properly testing the Chevrolet Camaro LT in multiplayer in Asphalt 9. Now previously I did a video about this car, but it was only one race because it only had one good race in it, but here are many. So my car is completely maxed. In this video, there will be three races from the D-Class Series and three races from the Classic Series. First of all, we are starting off with the D-Class Series races. So as you can probably tell from the title, I believe this car to be the best beginner car for multiplayer in Asphalt 9. It is probably the first car that people will max in the game, given that you can easily get blueprints for it through career and the daily car loot more easily than pretty much any other car in the game. And it really has great performance for being a low-end D-Class car, being able to reach over 180 miles per hour, having good night for efficiency, and having not the greatest handling, but it's not too bad either. To show you just how powerful this 1500 rank car can be against some 2000 rank cars, in this race we have two maxed Hemis. One of which is the car directly behind me, and I'm guessing the other one is the car behind him. Something happens to that guy that was right behind me back there, allowing me to get a bit more of a lead. Now, of course, the Hemi is overall a better car than the Camaro, being the second best car in Class D. If you would like to see how I rank the cars in each class, is go watch my recent Best and Worst Cars in Each Class video. That is now my third version of it, and I plan to make a new one every few updates, so every four to five to six months, or however long it takes. However, even with the Hemi being better than this car, you guys know that it is not just the car that determines victory in a race. The driver is also a huge part of that. So I guess my main purpose with this video is to show you guys that may be fairly new to Asphalt 9 that you can, in fact, win with some of these low-end beginner cars, especially this one, that are actually quite decent if you can drive them properly. There, we beat those two maxed Hemi scat packs. So you may be thinking, okay, well, you beat them once. They may have messed up. Well, in this race, we have five maxed Hemis. Actually, one of them is missing like one upgrade, but that upgrade doesn't really do a whole lot. So at the beginning here, you can see we're all pretty much bunched up. The good thing about this car is that with its good nitro efficiency, you don't really lose too much speed when going around the corners if you have perfect nitro. So that is one reason that this car is actually able to stay ahead here. Now, most of the Hemis have actually fallen behind. I assume it's because they did not use their nitro properly through that section up there so as to maintain full speed across all the sidewalks. If you would like to learn how you can maintain speed the best, go watch my How to Go Fast in Asphalt 9 video. Something I find kind of funny is that people are still asking me to do a face reveal, even though I've technically done it in three or four places now, including, most recently, my LEGO 2020 Shelby GT500 video, also the ESL video on the Asphalt channel. It was in the ESL Twitch stream because I went to the Mobile Open Finals and co-hosted that, for those of you who may not know. I also posted it in my community tab, and it's on ESL's Twitch. Twitter. So there's many places where my face is already there, even on a video on my YouTube channel now, the one about the Lego Shelby. So that's probably the easiest way that you can find it if you are still curious about that. Here, we somehow managed to beat all five of these Hemis by nearly three seconds, which is a pretty good feat for this Camaro. Now in this next race, we've got a lot of Hemis again. Five to be exact, just like in the previous race, joined by a DSE Tense. Now, on this track here, I think the DSE Tense may be able to do a bit better than on some of the other ones, because the thing about the DSE Tense is that I would say overall it is worse than the Camaro LT. However, it is more agile overall, while being a bit slower and not having as good of nitro efficiency. So that is also a good beginner car if you do not know how to drive a car that does not have good handling as well. I've begun taking the right route here instead of the left route because while it is a bit longer, it is faster in most, if not all, cars. And so I used to go left there all the time, and after I learned that right was faster, I didn't do it in multiplayer at first because that would have been a very risky thing for me to do since I didn't know it as well. So what I did was I practiced it in events and wherever else there was this track so that I could get better at it. And once I felt confident that I could do it without wrecking, I could do it enough times without messing up, that's when I began doing it. In a multiplayer. And that's pretty much what you should do with learning, well, any route on any track really. Practice it outside of places where it will be super important at that moment so that when it becomes very important, you can do it well. Oh, and about the face thing again, some people have asked me when I'm going to do face cam in my videos. Perhaps I'll do it in my next live stream. We'll see. 
So we managed to again beat a lot of Hemis. Now for three races that were recorded in the Classic Series. And in this one, we might see a bit more variety of cars. For example, in this race, we've got a Shelby, an Elise, and some other cars as well. The Shelby and two Elises in this race are four starred. So pretty much at the highest performance they could be. Okay, so for a little while now, I've been saying that I'm going to make a sort of Just Go Event rant video. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to structure it completely, but in in that video, what I want to do is prove mathematically just how pay to win the Jesco event really is. Because there are still some people somehow who are praising it as being a good event. Now, if you have tens of thousands of tokens stored up already, yeah, it's a decent event, but for the 99.99% of us who don't have that, it isn't. And to make it even worse, this event is not really based much on skill at all. Most of the times to beat are not really that hard. Now, obviously you have to have some skill in order to get the support cars and stuff like that, but largely it's just based on how many tokens you have to spend on syndicate coins to get packs, and really it's a lot based on luck as well. All of those aspects of it put together make it, in my opinion, Opinion, the worst event in all of Asphalt history, including Asphalt 8 events. I know that is a very bold claim, but I will present to you a case for that in my video about it, and I'm sure most of you guys will agree with me. So be on the lookout for that video coming this Saturday, most likely. Now, I have begun college at this point, so I'm still not 100% sure what's going to happen to my video scheduling, but I'm still going to try to upload two or three videos a week. I doubt four will happen usually, though. In that race there, actually, the DSE tens came in second, beating the Shelby and the two Max Deleases and the cars like that. Now, if you want to see how the DSE tens performs, I do have a video about that up on my channel as well. So after this video here, I will have an official 10 minute plus review of every original Asphalt 9 car in the game. Now, that is a pretty cool achievement, I think. At the beginning of this race, I got knocked down by a guy named Ren Deco, and somehow I was able to do a 360 in the air there when I was already well off the ground. Not not entirely sure how I was able to do that. Hot Dog has also mentioned that in his streams before as well. So this race is a good example of when I actually do try to knock down people. That was the guy that knocked me down at the beginning of the race, and so I 360'd him, and that's what's going to happen if you knock me down, and it seems like it was at least partially on purpose. Just wanting to give you all a fair warning. If you meet me in multiplayer and don't mess with me, I am not going to mess with you. So with my initial mission completed, it is now my mission to come in first, which I figured was most likely not going to happen at this point, given I was a Camaro at 1500 that got knocked down, and I'm facing some cars like 100 rank above me. Actually, that Shelby, I did manage to pass at this point, and then he passed me again, but I was not going to 360 him, because what did he do to me? Nothing. So I got slowed down a bit back there on the sidewalk, but I believe he did as well, so I 360 my way up to get Nitro, and then used the brake Nitro trick to go to the finish line. He was, like, right on top of me, and the guy who knocked me down earlier disconnected. Now we've got our final race, which is against five DSE tenses for some reason, and a Hemi and a Shelby. So now it's time for me to give my general review about this car. As you can see in the title, and as I said throughout the video, it is, in my opinion, the best beginner car in the game, being very easy to star up, cheap to upgrade, and just good overall in multiplayer, at least in the lower leagues. It's something to get you started while you build up through career and daily car loot and stuff like that to get better cars. This is a good one to go in with at the beginning. Stats-wise, we've got 184 miles per hour with quite good nitro efficiency, and that's a good combination for low class D. The handling is okay, but not the greatest. The drifting is kind of wide. The acceleration is not amazing either, but it's not the worst. And overall, this car is fairly fun to drive. Not quite as fun as its cousin, the ZL1, but yeah, that one is a big pain to star up. Probably the hardest car that is only three stars to actually max that's in the game. So we have pulled quite far away from everybody else here. The Hemi in this race was max, but actually the Shelby was only three star. I used to say that the Dodge Challenger SRT8 was the best beginner car in the game because it used to have decent stats along with quite good top speed. It still has a top speed, but literally nothing else. It's really bad now. In terms of the stats, however, I was able to do okay actually in multiplayer with it. And I may have a video about that coming sometime in the near future as well. Got a lot of stuff planned, guys. So here, we take the victory. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and Forza content, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.